How to drive the customer experience with logistics is the topic of my conversation today with Michael Campisi, the Senior Vice President of Sales and Marketing with EFW. Hi, Michael. Hi, how are you, Bob? Good, and thank you very much for spending the time with me. Yeah. Now, as you know, logistics has long been seen as a back office function, yes. invisible to the outside world, and yet, it seems that it does have an impact on the customer experience after all. Can you describe what that impact is these days? Oh, I think uh, now more than ever, uh, people are realizing just what an impact logistics has. It's It's been, uh, I think up until about, well, about two years ago, right, COVID, you, if you ask somebody what, what what's supply chain management, what is the supply chain, nobody would have any idea. Now at any cocktail party, it's it's uh, it's every other conversation. It's, it's, so I think we're, we're um, I mean, you know, anything we have delivered to our home, anything we have delivered anywhere in the supply chain where, where a, a truck or a train or a plane or a ship is moving it, uh, we, we can be, that impact, that experience can be impacted. Late deliveries, um, the experience of, of the people you, you deal with that come into your home and deliver your new sofa, uh, just, just so many ways that uh, the customer experience is impacted. Visibility, we've all been impacted by the Amazon effect and we expect to be able to know when it's going to be there and the moment it gets there, get notified. So uh, yeah. yeah, it's a big, it's all big about piece of it. Brand reputation, isn't it? I For mean, sure, yeah, it can impact front. your brand. And if the logistics falls through, the logistics provider isn't getting blamed, it's the brand who's getting blamed. It's hurting them more than anything else, the isn't it? The logistics provider is very definitely an extension of the brand of the carriers they, they support, right. yeah. So what can a logistics leader do today, given the fact that it's so inextricably linked to the customer experience, what can a leader do today to enhance that experience? I, I think there are a number of steps. I'll, I'll just take take three. So, so one would be uh, in that logistics practice, in that department to, to install, I call install the customer experience lens in their team, in their processes, uh, in all that they do. So it's, it's very easy to approach projects or development or, or any new uh, exercise or anything you, you kind of tackle in a logistics department and, and just looking to solve what's what's in your own domain and not really not not really seeing where the customer exists downstream from whatever you're doing whether you're modifying an interface in a TMS system or you're talking about you're doing some kind of an integration to a, to an ERP solution or you're just you know you're buying some new piece of equipment the customers in there somewhere and um, if you have a team that you 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 know you you literally can put the the CX the customer experience glasses on get the lens and at least one lens in their glasses mm. they will always be thinking of how what they do impacts that customer experience so 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 that's one is is to is to um to try to figure out ways to do that uh the second would be you know collaborating with customer experience leaders in your business so some businesses have a more robust uh, customer experience practice where they might even have a chief customer officer or a, a chief experience officer and some are just beginning to get comfortable with the idea of CX as a, as, a, as a discipline in their organization. But whatever it is, whoever those, those thought leaders are in customer experience in your business, as a logistics leader, a logistics manager, anyone in that department, partner with those people, bring them into what you do and let them help build some, some discipline, some customer experience discipline uh, and, and partner with you to, to, to elevate uh, the logistics um, uh, department and the impact they have and so that the rest of the organization sees the value. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I would say, you know, one of the other uh, things that um, everybody's trying to automate everything, right? I mean, ev everything that you can think of, every, we, we all get hung up in, in the IVR phone trees. We, you know, do it through the portal. I've just had to do something recently where um, there was no way to do it through the portal, but the company I was, you know, interacting with insisted I do it through the portal, except huh. the options weren't there, right? So okay. everybody's trying to automate everything. And the, the reality is, with customer experience, very often, um, people make the difference. And automation is designed usually to map around and, and serve when, when, when the process stays on the happy path. In other words, if everything goes right, nothing goes wrong, the automation can usually get you from point A to point B. But, as we all know, the world is imperfect. There are defects. You come off that paved road onto the dirt road and it gets a little, little rocky. And that's where you need real people who have experience, who have empathy, who, who are great at talking to customers. They still need to be somewhere in the equation to be able to step up 
talk to your customers, resolve issues. And a lot of that happens in logistics. It's just because it's an imperfect yeah. uh, discipline. So don't wash out all of these great experience, you know, critical thinkers, resourceful people, and replace them with technology. It's, I'm not saying don't, don't use technology. I'm not saying don't get more efficient. Know what you're using it for and what, what it's going to achieve specifically as it relates to the customer experience, it seems to be what you're Absolutely. applying here. Absolutely, yes. Right. And save the great people who, are the, 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 who have those critical thinking skills. And if you have to redeploy them into something else, do that, but but uh, you know, automate the mundane and the mm -hmm. repetitive. But, but make sure you have those. Qualified even as people. we put on the CX lens, or as you said, maybe one CX lens. Yeah. Is there not still the vestige of this concept of logistics and supply chain being a cost center, where costs must be controlled at all costs? And yes. so, how do you balance that? You do need to keep costs down, and what you're suggesting, meeting the customer demand, can be very expensive. So yes. Wh where's that balance achieved by a logistics leader? I think that, uh, you know, so logistics leaders can't afford to ignore cost. You know, they're, they're given an, an equation to balance and, you know, it's the, everybody wants the free delivery, right? The, the, the delivery's free. Well, that, that money's got to come from somewhere to get it delivered. So mm -hmm. it's a very real part of what a logistics uh, operation is, is solving for. And often, uh, you know, they're, they're not just cost centers, but more, more commonly today, you're seeing logistics departments being tackled with being uh, profit centers. Uh, they're, wow. they're actually, you know, looking. Companies are looking to find margin in, in that uh, in that segment of the customer journey. So it is challenging. Um, they they can't lose uh, they can't lose that. I think partnering with uh, providers, uh, you know. So if you're a, if you're a shipper, if you're a here, you know, if this event where we're at, a, there are a lot of retailers. Partner with providers who are willing to really study your business, understand, kind of build their own domain knowledge around what you do so they can really look at all elements of your supply chain and look for ways to solve for uh, that cost savings that might not be apparent. It's not mm -hmm. always the cheaper rate. There are soft costs that exist. You know, there's externalities. You can, you can reduce a rate over here, and we all, we all know examples in our own lives. I'm going to buy something a little cheaper here, but I'm going to negatively affect something else over there. Or the opposite can be true. It could, right. I could have a positive. Can't have it all, necessarily. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've established that logistics is now at the front line. Yes. Okay, maybe back office, but definitely front line. And yet there are so many ways in which the customer experience can fail, and often it can be the fault of other departments in the organization, yeah. and yet be blamed on logistics. Yes. What does a logistic leader do in a situation like that? Yeah, that's, I, I kind of think of that, I'm, I'm a visual uh, person, I, I think of that as I've got folks up the river throwing uh, pollution in the river and, I, and it, it flows down by me and I, right. I kind of get blamed on it. Or, or, or I've got you know, to treat the water at some point. One of the things you, you can do is identify those, those sources of, of pollution. Where are those, those process contaminants? Where is that runoff coming off of somebody else's process or somebody else's factory that's causing a problem for you? quantify it and really really kind of get the story of it. And the first thing you do is, is go talk to that other business leader, that person who has that area of the business. Maybe in partnership with your customer experience champion, right? So as a logistics leader, I would find my customer experience uh, VP or champion and maybe you know sit down and have a meeting with somebody who's got a process that's affecting me. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, sometimes that works because you, that person is customer experience minded and, um, and, and they're ready to make a change. But if it doesn't, you can create reports to illuminate where the problem is coming from and, and you know, effectively try to redirect some of that, that pain back in the direction okay. of the source. Good, good news for a logistics leader, some good steps to take. And yeah. Michael, thank you very much for just for talking of this whole issue of driving the customer experience through logistics. I really appreciate your insight, but I would like to take a moment to ask you about EFW. Yeah. Who are you guys and what do you do in the marketplace? Oh, uh, well, EFW is Estes Forwarding Worldwide. That, that E in EFW is a, is a big deal. Estes is the largest privately held transportation company in the United States. It's based in Richmond, Virginia, We've been in business for 91 years. We're about a $5 billion company. EFW is a wholly owned subsidiary of, of Estes, Estes, Estes Express Lines. Mm -hmm. Estes Express Lines, big, prim, the bones of that are primarily LTL, a big asset-based company, 21,000 employees. EFW exists to be the non-asset-based, all the things that the LTL that the asset doesn't want to do, we do those things. So we're in truckload brokerage, we're in international freight forwarding, import, export, air, ocean domestic expedited freight forwarding. We have a trade show division that, that, that brings uh, uh, booths like this in and out, and, and we do that uh, you know, as a very focused and managed service. We have four million square feet of warehouse space. 
Um, so we're a full suite of uh, logistics capabilities and, 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 a, and a freight forwarder. Fantastic, yeah. Michael, yeah. thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Yeah, it's been great, Bob. Thanks for thank having you. me. Speaking with Michael Campisi of EFW. Thank you very much for watching.